production funding for Rear Visions and Roadside Revelations has been provided in part by Sprint, committed to the community, connecting you to the world. Welcome to a show about things you can see without going far and a lot of them are free. If you thought there was nothing in the old heartland, you ought to hit the black op with these fools in a van. Look out, they're driving hard, checking out art in their own backyard. Randy does the steering so he won't hurl. Mike's got the map, such a man of the world. That's done with the camera, kind of heavy on his shoulder. And that giant ball of tape, it's a world record holder. Look out, they're driving hard, checking out art in their own backyard. Look out, they're driving hard, checking out the world in their own backyard. Checking out the world in their own backyard. Grasshopper, Grasshopper. Dear TV Mailbag, is this one of those zen moments? Hi, Don the Camera Guy here, and I guess you could say I'm itching to get out of Beardstown, where we've spent the night because of Burgoo, or at least close proximity to it since Orangeville, the Burgoo capital, is just eight miles down the road. It's that meal on a stick that you eat out of a bowl. Even if they aren't sure what it is, these TV weasels can't resist getting something for free. No, we're just simulating actual Burgoo conditions. Because today's not the actual Burgoo festival. That comes in the fall. So we're just Burgoofing around. I smell Burgoo. Tell us, what is Burgoo? It's a, it's a soup. It used to be. Well, look down the streets of Orangeville. Do you see any cats, dogs, anything? <laughs> no. We, we are clean. <laughs> legally, legally. It's uh, chicken and beef. They cook it for 12 hours, uh, 1,800 gallons of the stuff. After you mulch it together for 12 hours, it's completely un un unidentifiable. It's sort of like legislation. No. Well, uh, I guess there's... There's no time like the present. No. Or there's no time like tomorrow. <laughs> there's tendrils or something there. OK. <laughs> That's the best time to eat burgoo when you're starving. Yeah. Tastes pretty good, but it's kind of gelatinous, isn't it? It has a lovely flavor. It is. It is. It's mulch. <laughs> <laughs> it's mulch. <laughs> there are about 150 communities that serve burgoo. But this is the this is the Burgoo capital. You know why? <laughs> because we call ourselves the Burgoo capital. Because you did a survey. Yes, we did. <laughs> Every fall, thousands of people flock here to eat, drink, and be merry. And I suppose by then I might have found myself something without me to eat. Though here in the farmlands of Illinois, that's much easier said than done. So I suppose while Randy puts pedal to the metal, I'll just sit back and ponder our eventual destination, the place of my birth and the womb from which our new supposedly grand vehicle has sprung. I'm talking, of course, about the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. Can we go to my little league field? Can you get us there? Where I first played catch? Can we go, Dad? Can we go? Can we go? Can we go? And after we play catch, we'll buy me some of that licorice in a string from the shack. You want me to light that? Yeah, light that, will you? Oh, yeah. How's that? Hey, are those Cape Cod chips? Now, after a while, our rural route did give way to a bit of city driving. And that bit of a city would be Peoria, dazzling us right off the bat with this Ponderosa-sized worm ranch. Look, and it goes on forever. Followed just a few blocks away by the kind of place where inventory becomes insulation. Best of all, they're just a hop, skip, and jump away from a true traveler's landmark. This giant is in fiberglass with a dew borrowed from Jackie O and a wardrobe from Mike's imagination. Here, I'll just circle underneath her yeah, stately circle. breasts. We circled several times to verify our data, then spun back off to the fertile fields of central Illinois. 
taking a pause to attend to our own vehicular needs. Shall we check the fluids? This would be a first, wouldn't it? <laughs> TV We've first. never done that before. Ah. Uh, We've never you, checked you go the ahead. fluids. You go ahead. No, 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 no. I think why well, start I start a bad habit now. I'm gonna release a few. Not that they tell me much, but somehow I've gleaned we're looking for something called the prairie mast. Whatever that might be. Don, we're looking for a big prairie mast. Great big prairie mast. Do you see it? Well, I see something sticking up. Oh, I see it too. Wow. Well, no one said it was gonna be great. I gotta like it. I gotta like it. I drove this far. This being a show about creativity in places where you'd least expect to find it, we were glad to find the prairie mast, but not glad enough to stick around in this wind. It stands erect on the prairie. So now Carol, the nice lady who makes our maps, is going to show you how we blew out of Illinois right past Indiana into Michigan. All was calm and serene until an impromptu turn towards Grand Junction got someone's knickers in a twist. I don't want to go see this big stupid chair. Come on. I'm serious. This is this is beneath us. <laughs> There's a lot of TV viewers that like to see us get the chair. <laughs> Turns out the world's largest wicker chair is indeed a sight to behold, sitting right there on Main Street in Grand Junction. That's actually kind of cool. Just across the way from the most baffling sign I've seen in a while. Needing neither, we wisely opted to jump back in the van, just in time to snap this picture postcard moment on the shores of Lake Michigan. Detroit, I'm coming home. Last one, absolutely the last quarter. This has got to be it. We got to go. Oh, magic fingers. Can't resist it. Every time, every night, every morning. Sure, it's a star, but sometimes yeah. that big ball of tape is hardly worth the trouble. Tell me about it. Tell him about it. Anyway, this would be Grand Haven, known for its dancing water spectaculars and, in some circles, as the home of the sign shrine. Oh, it looks like it's been um, vandalized. Miscreants and Michigan winners have taken their toll, but up close you can still see how George Zisk has used paint on wood repeatedly to let people know his feelings about, well, just about everything in the last few decades. I could buy it and I'd use it, I'd buy it, I'd use it, I'd buy some more and use it. And as long as it wasn't snow falling on the where I'm painting, I, I'd be on the ladders painting that th through a blizzard even. You build up a hell of a vocabulary just by what I've been doing. You write it and you figure, hey, this don't sound right, so you put a better sounding word in there. You get better with words. You get a better vocabulary. Oh, yeah. Well, it's easy to do it on a piece of paper when you get a better word, but, but when you're painting it on your house, it's a little harder, isn't it? Well, I, I thought I told you. I'll wake up, write it down before you forget it. Write it down before you forget it. Write it down before you forget it. And when you've got enough to make a big sign, you've already written all these. All these lines will make a hell of a big sign. Yeah, these are the biggest. Well, when I put all these in, in, in clean across the front yard, 66 feet, you got a lot of sign. I pawned away at the federal government, national government, state, counties, and local municipal. That's all we got. So you feel like the things you've been putting up have really made a difference? Oh, I guess so. And that's what makes you go because, boy, when you win them, there's nothing like beating their ass. <laughs> no, it won't be City Hall stopping George, but he admits getting up on the ladder isn't as easy as it used to be. Good thing those folks from Intuit, the Visionary Arts Center in Chicago, have done such a good job documenting his declarations. They think of you as an artist. Do you see yourself as an artist? Hell no. But I like it when they say that. I got a, an extra reason to do it. Hell, it's art. 
They told me it is. <laughs> like Jesse Howard's sore head hill back in Missouri, the sheer volume of George's verbiage puts the sign shrine in a class all its own, which, come to think of it, might describe this show as well. Did I show the good folks at home the lovely new haircut I got? Mm, isn't that uh, a beauty? That's why I'm wearing this fancy Rare Visions and Roadside Revelations hat. You could get your own, though, right off our website. We have a website? We have a website. What is it? www.kcpt.org. Now that the shameless self-promotion is over with, we're pushing on to East Lansing, home of another world's largest. Lug nut, that is. Now that's fun to say, but only so much fun to see after a while. So imagine my delight when someone actually said, how about lunch? And how do you feel about tubas? Music and food have been cohabitating here since the Travelers Club opened in Okomo's back in the 70s. But it wasn't until Steve started mounting his collection on the wall that it became a museum. Listen up, this just might be the educational portion of our show. That's uh, the only one known of its kind. It's the uh, triple E flat. The tubing is so long, it goes around three times. Another rare one is that double bell euphonium, which is made around the 1860s. Because the smaller ones are, are often called alto horns or tenor horns or uh, baritones. Officially, any upright valve instrument that is a lip vibrated cup mouthpiece conically bored multi valve aerophone of a lower register is a tuba. I've got a question. Do they really grow corn this small in yeah. Michigan? A couple of years ago, a John Philip Sousa band was touring the country, and there were four professional tubists, and they just had a ball. They took down the tubas all over the restaurant. And, and the funny thing is our clientele doesn't seem to think it's odd that they're sitting here eating breakfast. The restaurant is full and there's these people just playing the horns all over the place and everybody just keeps on eating. <laughs> Probably because the food is so darn good here. I'm talking black beans and garlic and anything but grilled cheese and iceberg lettuce and you know I think I'd stay if it wasn't for that quest I'm on. Did I ever tell you that I was born right here? So we said goodbye to the tubas and headed for the city. First stop, Ham Tramic, presided over by a giant kielbasa. Big weenie. Here amidst these densely packed row houses sits a backyard unlike any you've ever seen. Created by an ex-GMer who's been putting a new spin on his retirement years. I think, first of all, you need to remind us how to say your name. Dmitro Shelok. I come from Ukraine, the United States. When did you start working on these things, then? Well, about eight years ago. Yeah, every day, stay in the garage. Eight hours every day. You built all this in eight years? Everything, that's what you see, yeah. Then I put them on the top. For public United States. People say very nice color. Beautiful but, colors. Yeah, there's everything working with Lindy. Okay, all time on television. That's oh, enough. Yeah. Cutting wood. Nice wood. What are they doing? Pumping oil? <laughs> they cut wood too, the same. Different factory. So you laid in bed at night yeah. and you thought, uh, yeah. I got to make a Concord. Concord, I make in six months. Six months? <laughs> six months Concord. It took them 10 years to make yeah. the Concord. No, no, no. What do the neighbors think? Are they happy that you've done this? So far, nobody say nothing. Everybody's set quite, no noisy. Everybody liking this. That must make you feel really good. It's nice, yeah. every chicken hand, chicken hand. <laughs> Okay, camera, that's enough. <laughs> Look at that. I love your good invention. I like everything around it. P.S. I have that same Mickey lunch kit at home. <laughs> <laughs> this is what children need to see. Yeah. You like that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very creative job. Hope nobody messes with it. <laughs>
As an artist, I think your expression is very vivid. Joe Chase from Connecticut. I like this. Please turn the lights on more. Yeah. It looks cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is something nice, isn't it? That's a, that's a, that's a proof. That's the proof. Proof from people. Right there. Right there. <laughs> if that doesn't prove it, what does? How's that for a jaw-dropping way to start my homecoming? From what I'm told, there'll be even more tomorrow. Just don't let them leave me in this alley. Don't leave me here. We're gonna have to do this daring maneuver. You know, it was Briggs Stadium when I lived here. Really? Right, during the Eisenhower years, the last time I played catch here. Looks like we're heading downtown. That's the giant Wren Center looming above, and this would be Chrysler Avenue, but where we're going is a completely different story. And that's part of the point of the Heidelberg Project, named for this street where Tyree Guyton was raised. The riots of 1967 did take a terrible toll on this part of town, but the monumental work of environmental art that Guyton created has succeeded in bringing thousands and thousands and thousands back to see what has emerged from the ashes. The Heidelberg project started up in 1986. I remember looking out here, and all around it we had it was just blight. It was just uh, it was sad situation and I was standing in the door of the house and I looked outside and I was like wow it hit me I had this vision and I saw what it could become and I said well okay I got a background in art and let me use my art skills to to do something there was a house in this, in this lot here and I came out and started on that house and then I just kind of went up and down the block simultaneously just working on the different houses and the vacant lots and the trees and the street and everything. Well, yeah, you see the shoes and uh, the dots and uh, yeah, the faces. Yeah, you see a lot of faces. These are the faces of, of God, the faces of the people. So you see a lot of those. We're standing in front of what is called the OJ House. And that actually stands for obstruction of justice not OJ, <laughs> but it did make reference to that trial when it was going on and the artist basically was poking fun at, you know, the media frenzy that was going on during that time when we had so many other issues and so many other areas that we should be focusing on. So he fashioned it in his uh, Heidelberg fashion, which consists of a lot of cast-offs and found objects and many of the things that you see throughout the project um, have been found right within the project from cleaning up the neighborhood, cleaning up the community. I'm driving around all the time looking for objects and I, I have a tendency of taking found objects and bringing them back here, and painting on them and, and giving them life again. So I paint on any and everything. I have uh, even started to poke it up myself. One house became two, became three, became four. The neighbors got involved. The city of Detroit said, hey, this man's a hero. He's great. He's bringing folks back into the community. We would keep this area really nice and clean and safe to the extent that neighbors who live on the block who aren't necessarily a part of the project could sit out on their porch comfortably. And that couldn't happen two blocks over because it's a war zone. I mean, you are standing in the middle of a war zone. We saw a, a, a neighborhood of people that was just idle and was brain dead and had nothing to say. But damn it, this project gave them a lot to talk about. It was a new way of looking at things. People wanted them, their, their houses decorated. They wanted something, something unique. A lot of times people would say, um, what would you want it in your neighborhood? You know, this is, this is uh, deplorable, it's junk. Well, every neighborhood doesn't need a Heidelberg project, but this is a drastic neighborhood, drastic measures were taken, and, uh, and it worked. Trouble is, the same city that gave Tyree awards in the beginning had a major change of heart along the way, dropping Heidelberg from VIP to POW. Several demolitions later, with the constant threat of more hanging over, Tyree's found that doing the legal dance is an art in itself. They came with a map, and it, was, it showed my attorneys that, well, we own this and this and that, and we also have a map, and I think that the map that we have says something different or says something else. So there's a conflict here. But yeah, they put these stakes here and they said, well, you can't use this land anymore. 
we can move those for you. Yeah. <laughs> if it'll help. <laughs> oh, I won't tell on you if you do. <laughs> I'm not saying they did, and I'm not saying they didn't. But if anybody ever deserved a break, it's the folks who've hung in here on Heidelberg. We're a nonprofit. We have a board of directors and a way for people to, to make donations, you know, <laughs> which we need. I don't edit it out. We need it. No telling what will come next for Tyree and his supporters. But I at least know I am one step closer now to my own field of dreams and that game of catch that's been on hold for 40 years. But not just yet. First, we're stopping to see Silvio, a pizza maker out on Plymouth Road who dishes up food and food for thought. Hey, listen, welcome to Detroit and welcome to the first Italian-American artistic historical museum in the United States. Sempre no arrivederci Roma. Well, I was born in Ausonia, near Napoli, and I made the, the mistake of coming to Detroit a long time ago, and I love it. It's a beautiful place. What year did you come? I came in 1956, Mike, on the Cristoforo Colombo boat, and I left from the same place that Caruso left. Three coins on the fountain, through the ripples, how they shine. I want to keep the Italians the way they were before they came over here. And at the same time, I want to help my American friends because, you know, I'm an American citizen. It cost me 75 bucks and everything a long time ago. <laughs> the duty of art, I think, is to, to study and guide life, to do, you know, things that are dear to us. Try to do what's correct. That's what I'm about. Te la voglia bene, si tutta vita mia. Io da volesse dicere, ma non c'è saccio di. What's going on on this wall here? Mike, this is the beautiful Stanley Cup. I thought the Stanley Cup traveled with the teams. But yeah, here but see, it you is. know, I felt sorry for the people uh, sometimes when the wings don't win the cup or some people seem to suffer so much. I said, well, we'll have one always here. And did you take any artistic license or are there really faucets? On no, the those are really cup? faucets. You can put five liters of wine. Mama, solo per te la mia canzone vola. Mama. I start right from the bottom. You start from the bottom and go up. It's called fabricare, fabricating. It's easy, it's almost the same thing as baking bread because you're using, you're using almost, the same, well, not the same material, but you know, <laughs> if, if the cement is a little bit too, too wet, you put a little bit more cement, okay? The thing is, it's in the mixing. You gotta mix it well. It's called mischiare in Italia. And I like pasta fazola, we, 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 we. We got Ramirez and Rimos here. And the Latin village is where the, all the Latin started. And there's the Bell of Freedom from the Salvation Army. It cost me 65 bucks. Jeez, oh, Pete. Look at this. What, How, where what, do you find time to bake? This is one of my favorite pieces here. This is called The Torch, Unity and Spirit of America. Sometimes you start to read. We got the most beautiful Madonna in the United States, I think. See, we Italians, we Catholics, we love Maria because, you know, but she's the mother of Jesus. This is a Roman anthem, it's called Porta Romana. Uh -huh. a, a little bit of my hometown. This Ooh, is little, that's pretty. This is the thing, my, because my hometown is on the hill, you know, there's a lot of steps. Over here we have the Stooges, you know, we have, uh, well, we have a Silvio with, with Mo and Curly and, and Larry. This is a replica of the really center of Rome. That thing too? Well, that's a Colosseum of Rome, actually, the, the center of the Western world. And this is, uh, this is one of the greatest men in the world, Cesare Ottaviano Augusto. He got a little big nose, you know, look at uh, what I hear, Katagilmos. I drive you guys crazy. No, no, Listen, not at all. We could stay for a week. You know, especially uh, if you feed us. Michael, you're so beautiful. Well, thank you. Listen. <laughs> thank you. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> well, Ma Michael I'm Murphy. I am staying. Michael right Murphy. Here. I'm not Rudolph going home. Rudolph Valentino and Dan Paisano. <laughs> hey, Paisano, and, speak Italiano. A hey, bambino, drink a little vino. You got to learn how to cut this pizza, okay? With scissors. 
<laughs> well, you cannot cut it with your feet, son. <laughs> now maybe it's that mischiari, but Silvio's pizza is pure perfection, as his regulars can attest. I need it now. So from here in Detroit, saluting a true Crustonian, did I mention I was born here? This is Don the Camera Guy, signing off. This is your, your life. I used to pitch, you know. I used to make them cry, Mikey. <laughs> when I hit them with my wild pitch or my fast pitch, or my fast wild pitch, Don Mossy was my inspiration. Play for the Tigers. You spitting on these? No. That was uh, just to show you I'm human. Now, what would you say taught you about television, playing ball here? Second string ain't so bad. <laughs> so we tell ourselves every day. Uh, it's just too bad there aren't some 10-year-olds we could whip up on. Because I hey, think we could take them. Get any fights down here? Um, I got in a fight back at the grade school. Kiss any girls? Uh, no, I was. Uh, I used to have this thing for Muff Morris. I was, I was over at her. Uh, her party when the grocery store burned down about 1959. And that's still your alibi, right? To learn more about the sights you've seen on this program, you can order the companion book to the series Rare Visions and Roadside Revelations by calling the number on your screen. Production funding for Rare Visions and Roadside Revelations has been provided in part by Sprint, committed to the community, connecting you to the world.